Hello, hello. Glad to see that you guys are here. We're going to get started in just a second. Actually pinned a few things up at the top of the space. Um, waiting for a few more people to get in and then we will run through this on this Wednesday. Um, how are you doing today? Uh, nothing to do. And I, I sent you a speaker request, ECW. I don't know if you want to send me one or not, but yeah, ready to get this started. Doing well. Thanks for uh, having me on. Um, yeah, I'm excited to um, speak about this topic. And um, yeah, thanks for, for the invite once again. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a, a great. Yeah. Oh, there you go. How you doing, uh, ECW? You've been so far. Everything going great? Man, it is. It has been pretty good. Actually, extremely busy as well. I don't know if you saw kind of the subsequent announcements that came out yesterday, but yeah, it's been a lot. Yeah, I saw it seem you have to, I need to get your recap on it because I was I was swamped with some client stuff, but I've got some things that in addition to what we've talked about, something that I did yesterday, which didn't open up because I actually got some uh, free credits on these virtual lands that I think might be interesting, give you a little, uh, well, make your space a little bit more interesting to people, depending on the feedback. I'll tell you why here in a second. <laughs> Okay, okay, awesome. I, 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 I laugh not because of that it's more, um, it, it's one of those things that would obviously, we talk about always trying to bring more people into the topic of Web3, whatever it is, metaverses or DeFi, however, solving real world use cases, that's something even that a, let's call it what it is, a 90 year old grandma could understand conceptually. I've got something and I'll need your help on it. If not, I'm just going to sit on it to prevent somebody from doing something, but we'll go into detail later about it. But uh, something I think you might find interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I look forward to chatting about it as well. And that's, that's kind of what this space is, is about is, you know, not only discussing, but also, you know, uh, incubating ideas that, that help bring on adoption and make this make sense to people in, in whatever way that it needs to. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely look forward to it. And without further ado, we'll, we'll jump into it as more people hop into the space. Um, we'll see if we can add some more people up on stage. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so yeah, uh, first and foremost, I want to welcome you guys to our Tech Talk podcast. Uh, this is a live discussion that we host weekly uh, here on X, where we highlight news, innovation, education, alpha, and business development in the Web3 technology and digital identity space. Uh, I am your host, Wayne Airdrop. I am the founder of iHeart Domains, uh, and we aim to be your number one resource for unbiased Web3 and blockchain domain education. With over 100 Tech Talk episodes and YouTube videos produced and archived over the past two years. Uh, you can search our entire content archive for prior recordings uh, and an easy to read overview of each one of these episodes at iheartdomains.com. Uh, also, our prior recordings are available in podcast form on every major podcast player, including Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And, and those are each easily reachable at techtalk.host. Um, and yeah, uh, I like to start off uh, each of these uh, Tech Talks with uh, opening news to cover you know, some of the important things that have happened over the past week. And as I said, this week has been kind of a, a pretty busy one with a lot of different announcements. So um, I'll start with a few of them that, that stand out. Um, one of the first, um, and I haven't made the official uh, announcement as of yet. I actually just changed the information and um, the, the Twitter bio, and I finished building out the website already, so it is live. Um, but we have officially launched the web3market.ing, which is Web3 Marketing, so it's a name hack. Um, but I've officially announced that website. Um, to connect with uh, uh, with platforms and, and other builders and projects in the space um, uh, that need to add, you know, either Twitter Spaces um, or some type of uh, digital marketing, um, you know, to their yeah to, to to whatever they're doing, you know, to market and promote and advertise their services. Um, you know, right now um, we have clients that we've been blessed to work with and, and have brought on board. And the question that I often get in my DMs is, you know, how to become a client, what kind of services that we offer. Um, oftentimes I have people that, you know, are, are confused at what I offer and wanted me to do something completely different. So, um, yeah, I created this website to, to, to help bridge that gap easy, uh, you know, easy place for people to go to, 
connect with us, see what we do offer. Um, we do offer uh, kind of a few different levels um, of partnership, um, you know, and, and some of you guys have already, you know, seen those partnerships kind of in action. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I've been a, a consultant for Freename for quite some time. And uh, one of the announcements I'm going to make is another example of that partnership. But uh, the levels of partnership that we're going to offer um, are uh, AMAs, which we've always offered, um, the Spaces Captain or Spaces Program. Uh, this is for brands or platforms that that want to develop their own spaces, kind of, uh, you know, custom tailored to, to, to whatever their platform is about. And this this requires, you know, kind of a deep dive on my part about that platform and, and kind of being an extension that way, help run the Spaces Program, uh, same as I'm doing with GBM. Um, all the way up to, to a full marketing partnership, you know, for those who, um, you, you know, want to hand, you know, kind of their digital marketing off to, to, to one person uh, to help coordinate. And uh, there's a lot of things that would go with that. So all those packages, like I said, are, are spelled out on uh, the Web3 Marketing website. Again, super easy to get to. That is web3market.ing. Um, and like I said, I haven't formally announced that yet. We'll do that formal announcement uh, probably in the next day or so. Um, so yeah, uh, if you guys uh, could please, uh, as always, support, like, share, retweet, all that good stuff. And, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out and, and hit me in the DMs. Um, do you have any questions uh, before I keep going? Hey, it's it's Matt. Uh, just I was going to ask one thing. I saw on your website uh, that you're accepting USDC as the currency, right, for the monthly for one of the services. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Well, then uh, remind me later off to show you some of the SEO stuff about how to put a tag behind it. There is no competing firm right now that says Web3 marketing agency, which accepts or accepts blank crypto. USDC. No one's properly optimized for that. So if anyone happens, I mean, it might only be one person a year who's looking for that, but they will find you from a traditional Google slash, you know, Bing or whatever search. So just remind me, but that might be a way to pick up one or two extra clients that are looking to pay an agency in crypto due to the very nature because they have crypto, they want to spend it. So just remind me and I'll walk you through that later. Okay. Good to know. We'll definitely reach out. Yeah. Anything um, to, to help optimize that site and get it working. Um, and this is just another example. Um, well, first, it's a, it's, it's a good example of a name hack uh, that I got quite a, quite a bit back that, you know, I intended to put to use. And this is the way I intended to put it to use. But yes, it's an example of, you know, how to get the most value, um, you know, ultimately out of any of the domain purchases that anybody, you know, is out there speculating on or, or, or collecting, you know, uh, as much as we want to find an, an, an end user to flip our domain to, you know, oftentimes if we buy, you know, domains that are related to uh, what we have going on as a business, the easiest way to, to create value out of them is to build on them. So uh, that's what I chose to do with the web3market.ing. I'm actually uh, going to roll with it uh, quite a bit, emails, all that good stuff. I, I think it's a very good brandable name hack. And I uh, was excited to win that one. I, I got it when uh, when they first came out, uh, when they were, when this TLD actually was first um, uh, made available for registrations, um, which was, I think, what, earlier this year, something like that. It was it was a fun little process to get it. So uh, I, I bid on this one and domain, uh, I think it was domaininvest.ing. So uh, that's where we ended up with. Uh, but kind of moving on, um, another big announcement, and uh, you guys will see the spaces tomorrow, is uh, the partnership with GBM Domains um, to be their spaces host. So Exactly as I was explaining, as part of uh, um, our marketing program or packages that we will be offering um, uh, to other platforms kind of formally, those are the relationships that we have with GBM. So we are going to be um, heading up and, and co-hosting their new uh, weekly domainer spaces that'll be on Thursdays. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with GBM domains and GBM auctions, kind of one and the same, um, we've been partnered with them uh, since the beginning of the year. Um, they actually built out our uh, custom auction D app uh, where we can uh, do on-chain auctions for uh, blockchain assets such as domains, which is what we've used it for. Uh, but they also launched the GBM domains platform, uh, which is an extremely powerful platform uh, for domainers, both on the Web 2 and Web 3 side. Uh, for, uh, I mean, anybody who's not under a rock in domaining has seen that the on-chain uh, domains has been a, a, a narrative that's been pretty strong here on Twitter. Uh, almost every you know platform entity registrar 
um, is basically jumping on the on-chain bandwagon in some way or building in the on-chain spectrum in some way. Um, you know, Unstoppable just uh, uh, released their ability to, to register dot coms and stuff like that. You've got 3DNS, name five, et cetera. Well, um, and, and this is not just from a bias. I mean, I've used almost every, you know, tokenization platform. Shouts out to all of them out there. We'll always continue to use them all. They all have their strengths. Okay, so let me put that out there first and foremost. But for those of you who are looking for like an extremely easy and very cost-effective way uh, to easily get uh, Web2 domains on-chain, um, GBM has a very attractive solution uh, with their GBM domains. So not only can you purchase domains directly on their website through uh, the relationship with Dynadot, you're purchasing them actually directly through Dynadot. So any extension that Dynadot offers, you can purchase and tokenize. I think that's the big thing, number one, because um, uh, most of the tokenization platforms right now, obviously, are doing .com, some uh, .xyz's. And they'll do like maybe 10, 15, 20 other TLDs, but they have, you know, a, a kind of wider range of TLDs, especially when you start getting into maybe wanting to tokenize something like web3market.ing, a TLD like that. It's probably not going to be tokenizable on most platforms, but um, if I sent it over to my Dynadot account, I could import this into GBM and get it tokenized. So um, with that relationship, you can, like I said, uh, you can register at the Dynadot prices, which are extremely affordable. And then it's just $1 to tokenize them and get them on the base chain. Um, so during these spaces, we're going to be talking about that process, talking about, you know, kind of the bullish um, uh, uh, market that is ahead for tokenized domains, a lot of the different things that they'll be utilized and used for. Um, we'll be going, um, I think the their appearance on Domain Sherpa with Andrew Rosner may have already happened, so we may also be recapping that as well. But yeah, um, yeah, hopefully you guys will be able to tune in. Uh, like I said, every Thursday, it'll be Thursdays at 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. And yeah, it'll be a, a, a fun space. Like I said, all about a lot of different e innovations that GBM has brought to the table. Oh, and beyond being able to tokenize domains, you can set up auctions right there on the spot, which we'll, we'll definitely dive into the value of that. Um, and before I keep on rambling, like I said, I can, if you guys have any questions, feel free to stop me or interject because uh, otherwise I'm going to keep going. Sometimes these announcements are a lot to get through. And all right, I'm going to keep on pushing. Uh, next thing up, uh, uh, like I said, it's been pretty busy week. A lot of this was compounded. Um, but we also announced our partnership with Mighty uh, Study, which has been something that's been in the works uh, for actually a couple of months. Um, we partnered with Mighty, and uh, together we developed a learn and earn module that is uh, self-paced and self-initiated. So anybody, and this was... You know, uh, as, as many of you have heard me say over and over and over and over again, yeah, you know, the ultimate goal is to bring normies on chain, you know, what we call quote unquote normies. Uh, the goal is to, to onboard, you know, the people correctly into the space and give them, you know, the best possible chance of extracting the value that Web3 provides. Um, and so with that being said, you know, that's kind of always been the agenda and the way that we build. And so uh, Mighty, uh, you know, shares obviously that ethos with their with their platform. They enabled us to be able to bring uh, this module uh, to market. Um, and so it exists. You can at any point that you'd like, or if you've got any friends that you'd like to teach about the basics of Web3 digital identity, you can go ahead and forward them over to this module. Um, it is a very easy to complete module. Like I said, it's covering the basics of Web3 digital identity. Um, help somebody get a general understanding of what they do, and then they can kind of dive further. Um, I'll continue to expand on these modules and, you know, go deeper into the subjects of digital identity, just like our spaces do. Um, but yeah, for now, uh, that module there exists to help onboard normal people. You earn XP uh, for completing the, the, the different tests in that course, and that XP can now, in turn, uh, be used to acquire things from uh, the Mighty.Study store. And I don't know if you guys, if any of you guys have had a chance to go on to the module yet or go into the mighty.study store, uh, but I did so, and they actually have like real NFTs and real games and stuff on there. Um, I don't know if I pinned it up. Oh, I haven't even posted that yet. So inside of the store right now, they've got uh, one of the NFTs in particular, uh, I think has like a 0 0.03 or 0 0.04 ETH floor. And your XP, I mean, it only costs uh, you know a few thousand XP and you get 50 just for taking this course. Um, but as you go through these courses and you stack up this XP, you know, this is probably the easiest and safest way to onboard people into some great NFTs 
by earning it and by learning something kind of along the way. So partnership with Mighty, um, you know, even if you're well versed in, in, in Web3 domains, you know, show a little love, roll through the course, share it with some other people. Use this maybe as a stepping stone to help onboard people into the space, especially if you've got a bag of domains and, and you're you know wanting to talk to your friends about acquiring some of them. You gotta start somewhere. Um, so yeah, uh, and then kind of rolling right along with what's pinned up at the top, um, the dot super and dot chain uh, subdomains from 3DNS were were launched earlier. Well, I think late last week or earlier this week, or via the weekend. I don't know. I get my days mixed up. Uh, but for those of you who uh, don't know who 3DNS is, they are the entity powering the dot box TLD. Uh, the dot box TLD is a uh, Web2 DNS TLD that was tokenized kind of from the start. Um, all domains that are registered on the dot box TLD are real Web2 domain names that are also tokenized and uh, work as ENS domain names and can be bought, sold, trade, transferred, uh, edited, all that good stuff uh, via the blockchain and all that good security and stuff. Um, they partnered with Optimism um, to potentially uh, apply for the dot .super and dot .chain TLDs formally from ICANN. And so in the meantime, and in anticipation of, you know, being successful in this round, um, they've uh, allowed people to register uh, third level domains off of the dots, uh, the super dot .box and the chain dot .box uh, subdomains respectively. Um, and, and the value prop behind that, it's only five bucks a year. Um, and uh, if you uh, register a subdomain uh, off of one of those, so let's say you have, um, like what I have, I have en.chain.box, uh, you'll get first dibs of registering or being able to acquire the, the regular, you know, SLD, which is en.chain, um, if and when uh, they acquire that TLD uh, via auction at DNA, or, or uh, uh, at ICANN. Uh, a couple opinions about that, you know, obviously, as you got to see from what I pinned, I did register some domains. Um, uh, I, I want to clarify a couple things because, uh, you know, oftentimes when, when, when I do something, sometimes people take it as an endorsement. So I do want to clarify that just because I do something doesn't mean that it's an endorsement that I'm saying that this is going to go through or I'm extremely bullish on it or anything like that. W what I will, however, do is I'll always share moves I make because you do never know. Uh, especially at this price point at $5, you know, for the year. And I think we may have a couple years until the round comes. So you may be looking at 10 or $15 uh, to, with renewals for each domain that you speculate on. But in the event, this goes through. And I think there's going to be a lot of TLDs that come up for this ICANN round. And so I know that there's somebody in the comments every time 3NS posts or, or posts about this and saying that it's going to be like $40 million and a long shot for them to get this TLD. Maybe if there was just a few, uh, but with our space potentially flooding ICANN with probably a bunch of ridiculous TLD requests and auctions that people are willing to go fundraise and put up money for, I think they might be able to push dot .super and dot .chain through for relatively cheap. I don't think there's that many people that are just going to drive up the price of this via auction. Um, you know, also in addition to that, their partnership with Optimism, I mean, Optimism isn't broke. They, they've got a little bit of money from them. Uh, the super chain concept that that kind of that, that mindset, that's something that comes from uh, the, the base and optimism and Zora. All of that is, is essentially the super chain. And we might even see some collaboration come from there. So with that being said, for five bucks and the names that I was able to pick up, yeah, I'm definitely going to speculate and I'm willing to take the gamble. So not financial advice, but uh, just wanted to put that out there so that you are informed. The registrations are live now. That is the value proposition. In the event that these do not pass the ICANN round or do not go through or they do not win the TLDs, you will still have a dot .super dot .box or a dot .chain dot .box domain name. So, and then whatever that's worth to you, you'll still be able to use it in ENS, build a website, email, all that good stuff. So there you go for that one. And then lastly, and I know this is like the longest announcements ever, but there's just been a lot of good stuff out here and I could even go longer. But lastly, and certainly not least, I want to send a big congratulations uh, to Freename, uh, who has become uh, officially uh, the first Web3 domain registrar or entity to become an ICANN accredited registrar and entity. Um, they have officially bridged the two worlds. Um, so even though there are, are companies that are that are doing it, you know, from a technological capacity, um, Freename actually has a stamp of approval. 
um, to register, you know, not only, you know, Web3 domains, which ICANN didn't have any jurisdiction over to begin with, but also Web2 domain names. And um, I believe you'll be able to tokenize them. Um, you'll be able to utilize the, the different free name utilities that they are continuing to develop and build. Uh, but big news is, is that chain or that, that bridge that we are trying to be built or trying to build has been, in a sense, formally built, at least connecting, you know, those two worlds. Um, you know, that, that's kind of the name of the game. We're pushing these TLDs for, well, those who don't want to accept that they're, you know, good enough as just Web3 identity that want to go the next the, the next step. You know, we're, we're continuously saying, you know, we want ICANN to recognize us. We want ICANN to work with us. We want ICANN to talk to us. And, you know, Freename happened to be the first, uh, you know, Web3 domain registrar uh, to, to cross that bridge and, and make that a reality. So uh, I say that to say, and I've said it a million times, this is the purpose of being diverse. This is the purpose of being open-minded. This is the purpose of supporting the real builders in this space who build, even if you have a difference of opinion or even if you don't have bags uh, with those uh, registrars. And that is because you never know what kind of progress that they're going to make that's going to benefit you positively. Um, you know, this is the first Web3 domain registrar that ICANN is accredited. We know Unstoppable is right around the corner. We know several others are going to apply. Eventually, this thing of bringing these to ICANN and becoming Web3 TL, Web2 TLDs is going to come to fruition. All of these things will happen with time with building, which is why it's important for us to support, like I said, the ones who are building in the space to push it forward, even if we have a difference in opinion. I am done with all of my announcements. Anybody got any questions? And um, uh, y'all feel free to uh, uh, love her. I hope I'm saying it right. This entire time I've known you, I don't think I've ever like said your name out loud, but uh, love her NFT verse. If you guys want to request to speak, world, feel free to hop up on stage. Uh, but before we get into the main discussion, nothing to do ECW. You guys got any questions about all that I just ran through? Uh, I'm going to reach out to you separately about some of the stuff you talked about. I'm going to listen to the replay, get my notes down again, and then uh, I'll come back to you because in the search engine world, there's so much, you know, so many agencies and so many individuals, consultants have hundreds of domains and they're trying to sell them or do whatever. They have no idea that about the ability to take an existing .com or .net or whatever they have and tokenize it. They don't understand the benefits of it, how it could raise the value, whatever they could do with it. So uh, I'll talk with you about that because there are hundreds of domains and hundreds of people, each with hundreds of domains sitting in those these GoDaddy accounts or whatever they've got that could be repurposed. So yeah, definitely. Let's talk further. Absolutely. And and hopefully, you know, the GBM space will turn into a hub where a lot of people will show up that have those same questions. Um, I did post an example kind of earlier. So I'm, I guess I would belong to what you would call the new school of domainers. And that's cool. Like this, I, I'm one of those guys that came from Web3 in a web two, getting hyped up on ish spaces like everybody else and going to register and domains. And then I'm sitting with this bag of domains that I don't know how to sell because I don't know how to, to, to do things right on after Nick or Dan or anything. You know, I'm, I'm navigating the best way possible, but web three has made it make sense to me. Tokenization has made it make sense to me. I'm able to sell hand registers for five, six, 10 X when I'm registering for 30 or 45 days earlier. And so those type of tools will help empower kind of the rest of us. Or like you said, some people that's got bags of just infinite domains that just aren't doing well where they're sitting. I think that the liquidity, the ease of transfer and execution, there's just so much to the tokenization of domains, so much value that it brings and that we're continuing to build and that we'll continue to bring it. it, it it'll definitely be a discussion um, that could be had continuously, which is why we're having no space so. Yeah, we'll talk in, in, in the back channels. And then, again, if anybody else has any questions along the same lines, hopefully we'll see you guys tomorrow morning at, at the GBM space. And, yeah, w without further ado, oh, go for it. I was just going to say, you know, congratulations on all the partnerships. And, um, yeah, everything ECW mentioned, I was like, wow, I, I get it. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm a normie. Uh, to say in this um, domain space and um, yeah that makes sense it's a way to provide liquidity to all these uh, names that may just be sitting around and you know what a good use of uh, tokenization and web3 um, to um, bring something that's sitting around that has been forgotten um, yeah no real, real, really cool I look forward to learning more about this and reaching out to you so yep yes sir yes sir exciting times ahead it, we, we used to talk about 
this being a possibility a, a year or two or years ago, and now that it's here, it's like now we're talking about other possibilities. And again, like the the value that Web3 just brings, this is kind of like the, the part of the bigger discussion of one thing not replacing the other, but kind of optimizing and making the other thing better. And I'm glad that we were able to make this technology make sense to Web2 domaining because that, that was a hard conversation to have for a little bit. But now we're, again, we were having those speculative conversations a year, two years ago, and now we're finally at the point where we can go ahead and execute and, and push that value forward. And I uh, want to say what's up to NFT verse. Thank you for coming up on stage. How you doing, sir? Hey, what's up, our heart man? Um, what's up, all the other speakers and, and people out there? Um, I just wanted to come up and say, man, congratulations again, man, on uh, all the partnerships and everything, man. Um, I think one thing that we've learned out here is that tech is going to always evolve. And if you can be patient, if you can just be patient enough and not be so distracted, you can kind of see the needle in the haystack, right? Um, and, and what I mean by that is just like you had mentioned, I heart is that what free name has accomplished, right? Like we were in, we're, we're in a rough bear market and I, I was just paying attention to how free name was moving in that bear market. They were heads down, continuing to build. Uh, you saw all the integrations that we, they were doing. You saw the partnerships that they were doing, the, the development in the background, I knew and I had a I had a pretty good feeling they were going to come out of this bear market. And once this bear market really starts to change over to a more bullish sentiment, I can see free name really taking space up uh, in this whole entire ecosystem. So I just want to say that it, it pays to just sometimes not be so distracted by all the noise out here. And really look into some of these projects and understand what they're bringing to the table. Uh, and, and is it for longevity or is it just for short term? And what I what I started to do is I started to push things away that were short term and look for the longevity plays. And and I believe free name is in that space. So I just want to come up and say that I heard. Yeah, man. Th thank you for for coming up. And I, I agree 100 percent with all that. And, and exactly as you're saying, like everybody, you, you've got to have an open mind. And, and in essence, it, culture is important, right? Culture, vibe, the, the, the what do you call it? Um, uh, I forget what the word it is, uh, hype. All of that stuff is important, even community. But at some point, you know, especially with investments in, in technology, you, you do got to follow just the tech. In some of these, you know, in, in some of these investments, you do have to think along that lines because, as you said, you know, tech, tech will do its own thing. Tech, tech doesn't listen to 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 FUD. Tech continues to build, and people who are focused on that and who are focused on building, you know, definitely deserve, um, you know, support. Like I said, um, you know, at the at the beginning of the space, they they deserve support at least on some level because they are the ones that inevitably are going to build the thing that we don't see coming. I don't think any of us have seen this coming. I mean, even even the speculative conversation, like I said, that we were having a year or two years ago, never saw the, the product or, or or this space being here. Like we're at the doorstep of ICANN now. Uh, we, the conversation that we were having even a year ago were so distanced from, from having any conversation or, or any sort of uh, relationship with ICANN. And now we're, we're, we're talking about one of our own being an accredited register now. Um, so yeah, uh, again, you know, not to take anybody away from from their tribes and, and their communities, but follow the tech, support the tech, because the tech ultimately is what's going to push us all forward. So yeah, thank you for coming up. Um, and then we've got one more person up on the stage. I don't think I've ever met you before. How you doing, DJ Dave? I'm doing great, man. What's up? Doing um, awesome. Um, so up, man? To you, Arsene. I. Sniffed, I I saw the web the digital identity part of the conversation. I'm sorry, I don't mean to come in and cut in, um, but yeah, I I know uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with a project uh, called called um, Oasis Protocol. Um, they get you Rose Token. Um, I don't think I've I've heard of Oasis to an extent. I don't know if we're thinking about the same one though, so I have to to look at it a little bit after. Yeah, yeah this is the one that was started by a Harvard um, professor. 
and now she's at Cal Berkeley, and she's a professor there too. And um, uh, they've actually got the largest university chain of any uh, Bitcoin, plus the most VC capital of any um, Web3 project. Uh, they hadn't really taken off yet. Uh, they did Web3 security, and um, they're doing a digital identity part with um, with um, Equifax, I think it is, um, to give people digital identities. But uh, they their concept is your digital identity attached attaches to a uh, say silo. And all the data that your digital identity, um, all the data that gets scraped normally by third-party apps gets scraped by you, and it goes into your silo. That's your data. It gets random. I mean, that's your data. Whatever you decide to put in there, medical, DNA, uh, whatever, and then you sell it to researchers anonymously. You know what I'm saying? Because everything's supposed to be blind anyway. Uh, all this, all the uh, university research studies and stuff like that are blind. Um, so, say if you've got, they actually did a contract for uh, Singapore where they're getting the DNA of every man, woman, and child in the country. Um, and it's going into that database of like that silos for each one of those people. And the medical university can go through and say you know we've got this this and this symptom uh this is a diagnosis what's the best medication for a person that fits this dna profile and boom the research is done instantly you know what i'm saying so uh web3 the digital identity is a really big thing i mean it's a lot bigger than most people think it is um i, I also uh have got a bunch of ENSs, so I'm familiar with them. Um, and I know a couple of other ENS projects. But, um, yeah, I mean, I could see uh, your digital ID that you eventually end up having should be something that you can attach an, an ENS to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. You spelled out, uh, and and me and actually, uh, it's, it's interesting. Me and nothing to do. I, I actually know both nothing to do and, and ECW wrestling in, in person. And me and nothing to do had actually had this conversation before about kind of the the potential. Well, not only the potential, but like that's kind of like the use case among with hundreds of others. But that's like a, a perfect use case for for blockchain for Web three technology um, that, that hopefully we see come to fruition as well. Um, so yeah, glad that you're tapped in. Uh, I am going to follow you, so hopefully you follow back. And yeah, um, let's go ahead and jump into this main topic. Um, I want to thank both Nothing to Do and ECW for joining me on this space. Uh, thank you guys both for your time. Uh, this is a topic I, I don't think we've really dug into um, uh, before, as far as the metaverse. I'm I'm a little detached from it as far as a, a user, but uh, understanding and concept. So I'm glad that you guys are both up here to add your input. As you guys can see from the um, uh, from the title, we're gaming, metaverse, and digital identity in Web3. Um, as I stated uh, earlier, the metaverse and Web3 digital identity go hand in hand. It's where it makes the most sense and where it provides the most value. Um, so yeah, wanted to, to definitely have this conversation and uh, want to begin actually with a dive into what the metaverse kind of even is. Um, I think uh, for a lot of us, especially those who, who aren't dibbling and dabbling or don't have like a, an already set definition of it, is probably one of the most misunderstood digital assets in the space that has kind of like the most broad potential. Um, we all know what it is. Like if somebody says the metaverse, we're like, oh, yeah. Uh, but most of us really don't know what it is. Um, and as with all things, the real value comes from, you know, when you know how to use something. Um, and, and it might help make sense uh, out of this big deal, you know, everyone is making uh, out of this little thing called digital identity that I keep making these spaces about. So, yeah, let, let's dive into, like I said, first and foremost, what even is the metaverse? And, and I'm actually going to go up to the top to you guys um, uh, to get your answer just real quick. But first, I want to go through kind of like a, 
a, a little formal explanation or, or formal description of what it is so that everybody can follow along. Um, so the metaverse is like a vast online space where people can meet, work, play games, and even create new experiences together, all in a computer-generated world. It blends elements of social media, online gaming, and virtual reality, making it possible for everyone to have an avatar that can walk around, chat, and interact with others in real time. Uh, it's a place where digital and real world mix, and it's built on technologies that allows its users to have control and ownership over their virtual experiences. I just wanted to put that, de that textbook definition out there so people could follow along and kind of get a general understanding of what it is. But the fact remains, the fact of the matter, kind of like I said a, 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 a little bit earlier, that the metaverse is like a million different things. And a lot of people kind of uh, uh, come into it and come into different metaverses for different reasons. So yeah, I'm gonna pose that question up to nothing to do first and then the ECW, but for you, what is the metaverse? Um, yeah, the, the metaverse to me is um, just a virtual um, universe. It's um, like a web too, but it's a web, um, different web dimension. And it's what connects all of us um, in a different experience um, to engage in. And um, it, this is going to just give us a different experience in terms of how we socialize, in terms of how we do commerce, in terms of creating our own digital persona or identity. And um, it's going to be a global, I think, um, connection amongst um, all humans, which um, really has been um, a challenge to do um, in in real life, right? In real life, how can you, how do we connect ourselves together? Um, and you have a choice of whether to use a professional identity, whether to use your own persona um, of a virtual identity. And I think that's where digital identity comes in. Um, it allows us to be able to um, basically um, curate how we want this world to see us as and whether we want um, to connect that to who we are in real life or not it becomes our management of how we want to manage blending our digital universe with our uh, in-person and real world universe yeah I, I love the i love that you said the word and i in general love the word curate it is a very powerful world to give so much power to to, to the individual and um, something that I want to just stick in, in, in to people's heads as you uh, listen to the space now and, and for the people who listen back to this uh, via the podcast, being able to curate your, your own experience. That's what a lot of these tools enable us to do. Um, posing the same question now to, to ECW, go for it, sir. Well, that was uh, your original definition, the one that came after. <laughs> uh, how about this? I'm going to just add a different twist on it from the categories of metaverses here's where i think i'm going to add some some extra value hopefully to the obviously people are kind enough to join right now live and your listeners uh, or the people on the archive later there are and this is where the definition gets loose because we're so used to fixed definitions these these platforms very well could be like you said you have your avatar you have your space the interactive capabilities with other people the ability to generate experiences uh, some of these now, especially the category we're going to go into, let's go with the three categories, what I'll call of metaverses, and even a fourth. Most people you meet on the street, like I said, have this concept of a metaverse, and most of them automatically think it's virtual reality. And I know this from people in the search engine world who are heavy hitters on the SEO experts and consultants have been doing it for years. They believe metaverse requires a VR headset and they need to and they get dizzy with it or it's only for gaming or something. And they have these very limited views of people who should otherwise have a much broader view of what the technology is. So that's why we're, we're really on the cutting edge of this from the business use case category. So other than Facebook's meta, which is probably the only thing most people would think about with the headsets like Oculus and all of these, let's remove that from the equation because that's its own different animal. But I'll call it three categories of metaverses, if you want to call it that. And not all of them require a space like with a video game character. 
and I'll explain in a moment. Uh, category one or category A are just general ones in the cloud. And that would be a website like spatial.io, uh, S-P-A-T. I-A-L, spatial, S-P-A-T-I-A-L dot I-O. And that's where you can build a lot of the gamifications, but they're individualized metaverses that are just kind of like a, like its own little world. And it's either or it's a conference room or you've made a little basketball court or whatever you want. And then very much like links on a website where you can jump from one website back and forth, they have the ability for you to jump from metaverse to metaverse, what they call portals. All it is is just it's just a link, dirty secret. <laughs> uh, category two would be the ones where cryptocurrency gets introduced into it, and but those are more fictional worlds that you've probably heard of: sandbox, decentraland, um, Axie Infinity, all of those, and that's where the play to earn comes in, where people where you see the new gaming cryptos are going to be really making a push. Uh, the you know the the artificial intelligence gaming crypto subsector that's publicly traded right now on the exchanges on coinbase and um you can see the prices on coin gecko and or wherever kucoin all of that in the web3 where those are traded right now for the most part uh correlate to the fictional world so we can make uh airdrop land we could make you know uh, uh whatever we want but it's a fictional world and it could be a castle, it could be in space, it could be you know, in a dungeon under, underwater, who knows, whatever. We can make our own little world. Um, and then the rules and the architecture and the game goes within it. But then the third one is the one that I want to talk you know, a little bit more about, and we'll go into some details here uh, in depth. And that's the ones that are actual platforms that are called metaverses that are tied to planet Earth, actual real world locations that everybody you've ever spoken to who don't even know how to spell web three or the word cryptocurrency they can relate to in one way or another it could be a local business owner who cares about his or her local shop or office or store all the way to known landmarks um so like in this ecw and the wrestling thing that i'm going under today i own in uh some of these metaverse platforms the plots of land that correspond with a well-known professional wrestling arena in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area of the United States. And I have land there that will have different utility depending on the platform. And at the time of this, which, what are we today? July 17th, 2024, there are roughly a dozen of these metaverses that are earth-based. And then within that, they all have different benefits, pros and cons right now, because everything's still in its infancy. So it's still like as, 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 when airdrop said earlier the following the tech and the building and we're going to see where this shakes out some have publicly traded cryptocurrencies some allow a typical metaverse structure but replicated on planet earth where you could put your own building like a tour guide and put your own content in there and some are more just like google maps but then they allow augmented reality drops to be dropped where then you could go physically to that location and hold up your phone and depending on how the technology works you could actually see you could hold your phone over a parking lot or a patch of grass which is otherwise just empty land in the real world put your phone over it and now a piece of content can come up but it corresponds with the geolocation and it can also earn you cryptocurrency or throw a 3d image or you can even enter into a metaverse there and, and that's where the utility really makes things interesting we'll go into that in a minute i'm gonna i'm gonna back off and let, let him continue but i just wanted to make sure that's what i'm seeing in those three categories of metaverses general kind of like we're just going to make a metaverse almost like a test environment or a game then they're the ones that are fictional worlds where you can buy the nfts that represent pieces of land in the game and then the other ones are the earth-based ones where you can buy corresponding pixels or you know parcels of land however they delineate it and then you could do things that actually correspond to real world places on earth man i i, I love that that detailed breakdown and you actually highlighted that as in pretty much every space there's a lot of diversity even in the metaverse space, which is why the understanding most of us have is so broad because we never know what anybody's actually referring to when they said it. So I'm glad you, you broke it into the categories and we'll, we'll, we'll get into the, to the why and kind of why there's the need for diversity as far as like how it applies. Uh, one of the things I did want to touch on, well, a couple of things, because you said like a lot. Um, 
one of the uh, the first things that you said that I like clicked on to that that I, I'll admit that I fall in that category is when people do first hear the term metaverse or augmented reality or anything like that, they assume that they got to walk around with these goggles on or, or this this headset and that's how you interact with the metaverse and uh, you know for for people in certain age brackets that's an immediate like turn off you can't see how you can apply that to regular life and that's that's so far from the truth and that's that's a big misunderstanding that i'm glad you know that we're we're able to clarify for a little bit here and you know hopefully in the future we'll continue to make those those use cases kind of more obvious but the metaverse is way bigger than just augmented reality or 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 placing yourself inside of and in, in literally inside of it but i mean that's a big part of it too and i've actually seen that in real world application where that makes sense so a lot of diversity in what the metaverse is um, or what it can be. As you said, it, it, it can be anything from, you know, fully customizable worlds based on lore, meeting rooms, um, you know, to, to actual physical places that are recreated, you know, in a virtual environment for you to, 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 to have a different experience than maybe even is possible in the real world. And, and that's what we're going to kind of go into next. I'm also glad that you brought up some examples of, of metaverses out there as well. Um, I'm not familiar with all the examples, uh, but if you guys could just, both of you, nothing to do with ECW, if you could briefly kind of go uh, uh, mention uh, one of the metaverses that you are more familiar and kind of uh, aligned with and a little bit of why, and then I'm going to, uh, we're going to get into kind of the next segment of this, which is, you know, the why, you know, well, I have a metaverse in the beginning, but let's go for it. Yeah, I've actually um, explored it, uh, the metaverse space, uh, such as with Network or with uh, Metropolis World. And it's it's really interesting as I'm looking towards these. And yes, I've looked at Decentraland, Sandbox, all those other guys. But I will say, like, what's different between Metropolis World and Network is one goes with the approach of let's build the whole, um, this virtual environment first. And then the other goes with, Let's actually get the partnerships, get the influencers, and get all these um, other players where that might attract an audience first. So it's like the chicken or the egg. Do we build this place and then try to find an audience to come to this awesome, you know, appealing, um, great graphics um, universe? Or do we go ahead and build all of our partners, get all the communities together, and then um, build our universe uh, and curate it towards all of our partners and brands that's going to be in um, this full side, this plat and use this as a platform for brands and for community members and for supporters, uh, for people to connect. And so, um, yeah, so back to what you were mentioning, um, um, Airdrop, it's really just... Um, for me, I'll talk a little bit more about Metropolis World and what, what drew me to there was mainly is what's partnerships. And um, I, I believe that sometimes we do need that audience first. And it's kind of this um, thing of, we call it, we're trying to bridge not from web two to web three, but really it's web 2.5. <laughs> and it's not about having a VR or an AR, uh, but it's also being accessible from multiple devices um, and making it accessible for your average user. Um, because then what are we gating? Because also making things accessible to everyone is important. And then having the experience that's accessible to a diverse crowd is important. And, um, how do we then go ahead and create our own persona or digital identity that matches us that's interoperable? And so a lot of like, let's say there's this avatar that you can build, but it's not just for this space. It can be interoperable with other um, metaverses. It's about how do you partner with other metaverses where now you treat those as hubs or portals or whatever it is. And so now we can go ahead and um, maintain our identity in this world, but also our identity in another world. And so I think really we talk about social cachet or social status um, or reputation and things. This digital avatar or whoever you're personifying eventually becomes you. And you may actually create multiple personas where this is who I want to portray in this aspect or in another aspect. And um, I think being able to blend um, just the real world into it where things that are familiar to us, the easiest way is fashion, 
right? You can see what you're wearing in this virtual um, environment and you go, you know what, this is what I'm wearing in the real environment. And whether we meet up, this is really going to change the game. This is what I'm excited about, of how we how we meet and our experiences with meeting. We're all used to Zoom or whatever we do, but it's kind of static. And so now we can meet in the space where we can have a little bit more of a shared experience, where if I want to simulate and show and train how to do something, I can. Um, but more, more importantly, let's say if there was some fashion item I wanted to wear, I can show it. We can you know, make tweaks we want in this environment and um, it can be worn, let's say if me or you wanted to meet in person, but we didn't want to necessarily dox ourselves, right? Um, we show up with our fashion items that we have that's linked to our virtual world, and you know that's that person. And you don't need to tell the whole world, this is who I am. And so I think there's you know huge benefits to that. Um, you know, Some people like their anonymity. And so the preservation of that, I think it's, you know, exciting. Um, I think in the world of simulation, I think that's really also very exciting for me. Um, I think DJ Dave mentioned earlier about like um, your your DNA and how you can, that's, that's partly yours and what you want to do with it or your data and things like that. Well, what I'm excited about, and let's say even in the health, health field, like you can simulate surgeries or trainings or um, how do I work with somebody from Japan? How do I work with somebody else from there and learn how they do things? Which is hard to kind of learn sometimes from a 2D video. Um, but now we can do this in a simulated environment where we can CAD design things, whether we want to 3D print, whatever it is. Um, it's just really opening up a new um you know, new dimension of how we can experience and learn. And, um, you know, some things even as simple as, let's say if I want to learn how to dance, maybe I don't want to go to a dance studio in real life. And maybe I want to learn how to dance from somebody virtually. Um, and, or maybe I want to learn how to um, do something from um, like a master class from a weapons master <laughs> of a weapon I really enjoy. And um, so, having access um, to these different services, I think it's also going to be opened up um, throughout these uh, spaces. And um, having your identity that's trustworthy, having a currency system, I think that's also, you know, super cool to be able to connect together. And going back to that topic of being tribal, you know, I see this like at the early stages of, of blockchain and cryptocurrency where even in gaming, we are kind of tribal. Like you say, I'm Nintendo, I'm PlayStation, I'm Sega, I'm whatever it is. Or, you know, you play a game and go, I'm Fortnite. And so when you play all these games, a lot of times we spend all this time and energy into it and the currency stuck within that environment. But when you talk about gaming and in the metaverse space, how we make it interoperable, it brings a different type of liquidity um, to the currency that's used in those type of games. So let's say for Roblox, it uses Roblox, right? You can now maybe, it could be Roblox um, in exchange for um, Gala or something else. And so the liquidity and the exchange of um, utilizing NFTs between accessory and items for your um, character that you are, you know, curating um, could be um, preserved um, throughout how you want to manage it. Um, so I think that's, that's just very different where we can now retain the value of the time that we put into these character creations that we've created and how we want to use that for either our own video tubing, either we want to use that for our own type of um, community we're trying to building or whether, you know, we want to use that for a different um, audience. Um, you know, all those social and um, um, gameplay value um, carries over and it's tied to you and it's no longer just kind of um, expired. So th those things are things that I really, um, that, that, that piques my interest in the space. Yeah, you, you hit a, a lot of points spot on and, and really started to dive into, uh, into the why, which we're going to dive into a lot more, but you gave some great examples of, of 
ways people can actually use the metaverse or different experiences in the metaverse, you know, that exist both now and, and that we're building towards in the future, um, that have like real actual benefit. It's not just playing games. Um, also, one big thing that you said in a, in a huge word, and this is like a buzzword in the digital identity space as well, but this is all digital identity. And it's interoperability. And that, that just shows you how, how much of a need for that that we have in the space. You can't really be your identity if you can't move it around or build on it or, or switch it up. So, um, you know, hopefully we see a lot of progression, um, you know, and just as we're trying to build towards interoperability in this space, you know, most of us, um, hopefully we see that same type of uh, progression in the metaverse space as well so that everything is able to stay cohesive so they actually truly uh, be an identity. Um, and then uh, posing the same question uh, to you, ECW, before we start really digging into some of the things that you can actually do with the metaverse. Oh, well, and, and that that basically not only what I have said, what was just said prior to me, but it was even better than what I was going to convey, especially, like I said, the ability to express yourself and the interoperability. So I want to explain my fashion or as you, and, and you hit on some great things. I didn't even think about, I want to learn how to dance, but I want to learn how to dance virtually because taking, you know, I'll take a step back. The let's go into the real world. Let's let's presume that we're dealing with people who can barely check their emails. Just hear me out for a second. I know that's kind of a foreign concept, but from their perspective, they actually do have some really good points. When you bring up Metaverse Web three, which is the why? Why should I care? What's in it for me? Or I've looked at it and it's too confusing. You hear it all the time. But what I see metaverses before we get into the real like specific use cases the human emotion of what it can do and let's start with we have pain and pleasure the typical things most people you know are always driven by from their motivations and let's start with the pain side so i think all of us and please forget i'm going to speak for all of us knowing that it's inappropriate to do so but <laughs> but hear me out i think we all hate wasting our time our or having wasted someone outside wasting our time our money our physical exertion for no benefit, um, uh, messing with our privacy, like you said, our, our, our blood, our DNA, or our archive information. Even these conversations right now could be captured and put on 11 labs and used as AI voices. So these are all risks that we're facing in this new technology. One of which is if you're in a court of law, if your voice in a voicemail is said, oh, well, we have the voicemail. It was recorded in July 1st of 2024. And they and the one attorney hits play and you hear the voicemail and the jury goes, oh, right? Well, then you can replicate the same thing. And I just and I just caught that attorney here and I just caught him on a voicemail and play the same thing back, but with whatever I want that attorney to say in his voice and say, I got that voicemail. And now the jury starts to question it, right? Because of is it real or is it fake? So they have that question. So these are, and that's a pain because people have the pain of confusion. They don't know. They don't have certainty. They don't, you know, so the, all of these elements can begin to get resolved in pieces of Web3, such as the metaverse. So I always like to start from it from that perspective. Uh, and whether it's a business owner, and I got into all of this stuff on the metaverse is because I help clients with their search engine rankings. And so I found all these, especially at the local level. So plumbers, in New York City, uh, personal injury attorney, Denver, Colorado, whatever those keywords are that someone might type into Google and facilitate a phone call that's a high ticket phone call. They always want to go higher up either in Google Maps or in the regular rankings of which some of these earth based metaverses had some hidden treasure in terms of the ability to move and bump people up in the rankings anywhere from one to 10 spots from wherever they were before the, the efforts were made. So doing so, I then it's like, I was just looking at it purely from the SEO search engine perspective, boost ranking boosting. And all of a sudden I stumbled upon all this world of what could be. I was like, this is absolutely fascinating. So the other thing is, um, and we're going to get into this on the why here in a second. And when I, I promised you something in the, in our little uh, message before we started today, I've got something cool to show you. Cool may not be the word, but I think people are going to resonate with it here in a second. But it's curiosity, people having truth withheld from them, uh, whether it be by media or inability to travel or or inability to express themselves. There are limitations, and I think the metaverse can also help overcome limitations. And then the question is: Is it worth the time and the effort and the funds to do so? 
either at the use case level or if we have to go into the development cycle, you know, to develop it. But is is the old expression is, is the juice worth the squeeze? And if the answer is yes, and by a large margin, then I think the metaverse solves a lot of problems at first in terms of people not wasting their time, wasting their money, wasting their physical exertion, having to be embarrassed in public, having um, to travel places and having a bad experience if you want to go outside. And I'll give you one use case as an example. In these Earth-based ones, which we'll go into in a minute, it's possible for people who are doing, say, in the real world, long-distance relationship. Husband has to travel for work, is away from the wife. Boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, right? you now can go on a date together in the metaverse in a place neither of you have ever been. This isn't just like a video game like Second Life, which was contained as its own entity, but we could go to Paris and go to the Eiffel Tower. We could go climb the hills to the Hollywood sign in California. And heck, you could go on 10 different dates in a night in the metaverse together off any device. You could even be sitting on the couch next to each other on a rainy night at home and say, honey, where do you wanna go? Oh, let's go, let's go to Paris. And you could go walk around the Eiffel Tower and explore it together in limited technology. But that is an option you could do now and save yourself a lot of time or money and begin to have experiences together. So we'll go into more of the why, but I just wanted to show some examples of the root emotions as to what the metaverse can solve to help expand its awareness. And it's a thing where you don't need the VR headsets or in, therefore a 95 year old grandmother or a kid who's totally into gaming can start to connect on middle ground. You can bring families or, you know, diverse corporations where people have different factions and belief systems. People can start to get together depending on what you need to accomplish. And that's where the flexibility and the variation and the variability within the metaverse universe ecosystem can be um, utilized properly and begin to solve problems or generate new experiences. But I'll back out and let you continue. Thank you. No, like, uh, again, more, uh, thank you again for that, that elaboration and perfect segue and kind of actually the big point of this space. You know, as I said, you know, one of the misconceptions that, uh, you know, some of us, I don't know if I'm like a boomer boomer, but I'm in my 40s. But some of us have, like I said, with the metaverse is that you need goggles, number one. And then the number two thing is when a lot of us hear the word metaverse, we think of it as, as a game. And as both you and nothing to do with highlighted, there are many real world use cases, and as you said, you know, pain points and problems that, that can be solved. And, and that's what I kind of want to tap on next. And as we know, like fun, fun adopts, fun adopts all the time, fun, hype, all that kind of stuff adopts, but but it has a, a limited run. And uh, although, you know, uh, we need a good mix of that to help onboard people, something that can stick, a real use case, a real reason, being able to really do something and, and empower yourself, um, you know, free up time, energy, do things more efficiently. Those are the things that really adopt and, and really help people stick and get the point of this. And again, like us understanding what we can do with these different things and these different terms and these different spaces that exist in our space will help give value to these other things that we're talking about. They're, they're, they're kind of chained together. If you're coming into the space and you find a bunch of value interacting with these meta worlds, metaverses, these environments, then you'll be able to see digital identity in the way that we're talking about it from that value perspective. Same as if you're coming in purely through gaming, if we're able to explain the utility and the benefit uh, of digital identity from that perspective, then you can understand it from that perspective because there's there's a diverse way that many of us will come to the space. So yeah, I, I'm glad that we are uh, having this conversation. And, and yeah, let's let's kind of get into, the, um, and you guys both touch on it some more. So uh, if you want to deep dive a little further on one or two particular things, we can. Uh, but just to recap uh, what, what you both were saying uh, earlier and what I'm saying now, um, you know, the metaverse, is and has the power to transform interactions and experiences by allowing people to connect in, you know, three-dimensional virtual environments or just, you know, and, and even some people may say, you know, 2D connecting, even this in essence is a metaverse, right? Anytime you have a virtual environment where people are able to, to connect the network is a metaverse per se, but we'll, we'll just stick with the virtual one. But in any event, um, you're able to connect in these environments that transcend uh, geographical and physical barriers. Uh, so you're able to talk to people, be in spaces, 
They interact with things that you normally couldn't if you were stuck inside your house. Um, you know, and hopefully these experiences will offer, uh, you know, lifelike social work and entertainment experiences um, that, that allow you, like I said, to, to replace some of the things that may be inefficient or inaccessible in your life. Um, you know, some of the instances that I know that people have, have definitely been using the metaverse, um, you know, an application and we'll, we'll definitely get more use cases. Like right now, because of the pandemic, we have shifted very much into a work from home culture. And for, for those of us who have been able to, to stay that way, you know, just talking over the phone, the old way of doing business, you know, it, it's absolutely enhanced by this new experience. And um, like I said, you know, many people are interacting, quote unquote, with these virtual words without even calling it a metaverse. But, uh, you know, for, for the sake of putting a definition on it, that is probably one of the chief or, or, or best use cases for that type of environment is to help optimize the way that we work and interact and have meetings and and, and communicate with each other. But just simple and plain. If you can stay at home and optimize your time and efficiency by using the computer, you can trade assets, do all that kind of stuff. If you can network with colleagues and peers and, and basically expand your platform globally without ever having to leave your desk, I mean, that is a solving a huge problem that we've had for the past millions of years up until 2022 or 2021, whatever the first metaverse per se was created. Up until that point, I mean, that was a problem that I think we've all had is how do you expand beyond your geographical limitation? And, and we've all done so, you know, different ways, but this is a really efficient and accessible way for, for everybody to have access to that same utility. So that is a big benefit. Attending online events, attending like uh, uh, ECW was saying, you know, being able to have dates and experiences and places that you've never been and, and you know, you kind of still ain't there, but you're there, kind of, right? And, and, and depending, you know, the experience that you may have in a virtual environment, it's definitely going to be unique, but it may be better in some ways than even the actual experience itself, or it may lead you to eventually, you know, recreate the real experience if that's something that you want to do. But in any event, that's one of the other things another big use case is going to be is we're going to see curated experiences, companies that really put their energy and development and resources into just building amazing metaverse experiences that tailor not to just us nerds, but to real people who want a real getaway. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing packages that start showing up in your ad feed for couples to for real put on an Oculus and go somewhere. Um, and then also, uh, like you said, for uh, the, the, you know, another example that you gave is to create virtual versions uh, of real physical spaces. And there can be a multitude of reasons for why someone would want to do that. Um, think of crime scenes, right? Um, if, if there was some AI or some instrument that was able to just immediately scan a crime scene when someone is, uh, arrives there, and then a detective or somebody is able to go back into that space and look at certain things. Um, you know, those things might be helpful. Doing all kinds of different uh, historical or, or, or school or education. Again, we can dive down the rabbit hole, but um, to put it right back to you guys, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you guys want to leave me with kind of one other big anticipated use case or maybe how you personally are planning on using the metaverse or currently using the metaverse right now to to improve your own life or, or business. We'll start with you, uh, uh, nothing to do. I'm kind of just going in that order. You and then ECW. You <laughs> got it. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, everything that's mentioned of how, why, why does this need to exist? And I think overcoming limitations is huge, right? Like if I was immobile, or if I was immunocompromised, or if I had certain health conditions, or let's say another pandemic broke out, you know, and I, it was on my bucket list to kind of like what ECW had mentioned, go on dates in Paris, or go on these other places, which I would not be able to access physically, uh, but I could access virtually. Um, I think there's tremendous value in that, but I would expand on that where a personal use case I, I look forward to is it's always how do I save myself more time and um, like the earth metaverse um, if I were to plan a trip there are certain things that I want to go to like maybe I want to look at Mount Fuji or maybe I want to go somewhere but I want to look at what a tour of that would look like during different seasons of the year and it would allow me to be able to plan how I want to do my trips 
So I think um, from a use case in that point of view, I think um, that there's there's tremendous value in that because it's how do I use my the best use of my time with my time off. Um, from another aspect, I think art is going to be huge in the space in the sense of um, having an immersive experience with art where some there's certain galleries where you can't have access to that and you're missing out on these works that have been you know, established for hundreds of years old and you have to fly to this museum to go see it. But now you don't have to do that, right? It can be curated into space and you go, oh, you know, that's what it looks like. Now, actually, I want to see it in person too. Or you go, you know what? It wasn't as exciting as I thought. Um, maybe I'll pass on this. Um, but then you also get to meet other community members who are interested in the same type of um, art that you're interested in or is looking for more of a different experience. And I know, like, um, just I was at consensus with Airdrop this uh recently this past year and uh, Claire Silver, who was a really big artist, she announced she's going to start having pop-up locations across, you know, um, the, the world where there's going to be these immersive art um, experiences. And um, it's how do you interact with art? How do you interact with um, things that we've never felt or seen before? And what does it, what kind of emotions does it draw from us? Um, and it's our own personalized experience of that. And um, lastly, I would say something that's not really spoken about is, you know, how do we retain our legacy? And sometimes, you know, you want to, so events happen to us that's unexpected. And if we were to move on, sometimes the one we leave behind have a hard time with how to interact with us. A lot of times they listen to a voicemail. Um, they listen to, you know, they look at photos. Um, but, you know, I think in this virtual space, there's a way to preserve us, right, in, a, in an interactive way, even if it is run by AI. Um, but, you know, they can take our voice. They can, you know, take what messages we want to say, which we can gate during different years um, for our children, for our grandchildren, for the next generations to be able to interact that this was who the, your lineage was and this is who you came from, even if it was virtual. Um, you know, it is kind of a cool way to still interact and, and be remembered. Um, so that's another use case that I think would be pretty cool. Um, that is capable um, in, in this type of space. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pass it on to ECW now. Yeah, I think he may have dropped from the speaker, but he had mentioned earlier um, about spatial and what you were saying right now actually just reminded me. So that's actually the only metaverse that, that I own per se. I mean, I had some other side land, but I sold that other deed when, when I could, as soon as I could. Um, but my spatial metaverse is, is actually an art gallery. So I have a, a personal art gallery that I was able to get from them uh, relatively early in that exact same concept, what you just mentioned, curating like kind of a, a, like I said, a gallery of my assets to pass down to my daughter. And this is what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for my daughter to pass it down so she could walk through it, appreciate and now, you know, use these assets, the real NFTs that exist in there. But like you said, like it, it's, but I don't know if, if any of you like those those namesakes being able, to, like you said, to cure. And, and I said this word before, it's an important word. It'll stick with you. Curate. That's one of the things that Web3 empowers us to do, again, is curate and curate something that can't be taken from you, something that you could truly own and pass down. Well, like you said, being able to curate an online legacy, something that you can give to someone that they can interact with, not just see on a piece of paper or play because you and I have definitely connected on this subject and, and, and I've mentioned, you know, many times the inspiration behind I Heart Domains is my mother. Uh, I lost my mother a couple of years ago. I have those moments where, you know, I, I, I watch and listen back to, to videos and look at pictures and, you know, I'm blessed. There, there, are, there are definitely times where I look at videos and pictures and, she, you know, she had a Facebook account. And I used to joke with her. That, you know, because, you know, I, I call myself old. She's older than me. But I used to joke with her about being her age, being on Facebook. But thank God she was. Like, seriously. You, you, I don't know if you guys really understand what I'm saying. Thank God she was on Facebook so much because now I have all of that to scroll back through. And, and you know, I think of 50 years ago when all people had was, you know, regular pictures. And 100 years from that, black and whites and things. 
as we progress technologically, we have the opportunity to capture our memories and pass down the things that we really want to convey to the people that come after us with different and better experiences. And that's why I'd gotten, uh, to, to make the long story short, that's why I'd gotten the, uh, the spatial uh, is, is to do that, is to curate that. And that's what I'm doing with it. So, so beautiful, perfect example of that. Um, and yeah, we got ECW back up. Oh, thank you for having me. And, and I love what you just said right there, because see, there, there's a real world problem, right? It's the inability to connect back with those that you loved who aren't with us, at least on this plane, however you define that, right? Because that's such a high emotion topic is grief, longing for somebody, loss of a loved one. And what you're doing to honor your mom is terrific. And also, like I said, what you're going to be passing on to your kids. So these are some fantastic things that will address high emotion topics along with interoperability, ownership, blockchain, you know, so it's verified that you actually posted it at that point in time. So now the transparency on the ledger will allow some of that to prevent confusion, misunderstanding, legality issues. There's a lot going on. Um, so kudos to you for what you're doing. I've got more I'm going to send you. I'll go through a couple more use cases just so we leave this for the listeners, uh, not just online, but those who capture this on the archive, just to start thinking about it. And again, the technology is going to change. Again, we're July 17th of 2024. Some of this could be changed by September 17th of 2024. We just don't know. So, uh, you know, and also everything else we talked about in Web3, we've got cryptos, we've got straight up traditional, uh, you know, uh, image based uh nfts that reward you like bored apes right you know so they they will spawn you can merge them with others but they basically give you access to others who have it from a status symbol so that solves a real world problem right so you could broadcast that you actually are part of an exclusive club because you own a board yape or or, or board ape excuse me, or pudgy penguin or whatever it is you have crypto that's gone up in value or some altcoin and then we have you know some of the other elements that are a part of this but just sticking back to the various metaverses um, like you said, you can curate, that adds tremendous value. You can uh, add multimedia to loved ones, so you can go back, that adds tremendous value. In the subset that we're talked about on the Earth-based metaverses, in addition to the search engine ranking potential right now, I'm also working with some to figure out a way to interact things with our Web3 domains. So whether it be on Freename or Unstoppable or ENS or wherever, uh, the handshake, excuse me, the, um, the ability to then bring those in either to tie in with the avatar, with the digital assets that you put in there, it's still open. I've actually dealt with some of the owners of these platforms, the head developers and the actual owners, and even they are having some trouble with it. But a year from now, like you said, the conversation we're having today, hopefully that all of a sudden makes our domains, or if you were on something like Freename, where we own the top level domain, the TLD, that's relevant to something on planet earth either around a category or around a topic or or a geographical base like dot texas or dot new york or whatever it would be something like that could add that much more value to the your investment by investing in early because of course a lot of us are always looking to make sure that we could have a hundred x a thousand x of our initial investment at some point coming back into the metaverse specifically on the earth-based category so again my three categories are ones like you have spatial which is just kind of a generic space in the cloud. You have the game-based platforms that are its own world like Decentraland or Sandbox and everything that they do, including the ability to earn crypto that is liquid. You can actually you know, make good money, theoretically, depending on how you do it. And then the new category, which are the Earth-based ones or the platforms that tie to planet Earth. In that subcategory, here are a couple of use cases just for further topics down the road. Um, in the business world, let's say you are designing a new space for a new type of supermarket. Maybe robots are going to become butchers and they're going to slice up your food. Maybe you're going to have Bitcoin machines to, to buy uh, your chicken and your eggs or your milk or whatever you want. So you might want to design these things and then you might want to be able to move these things around and walk around in it from the different perspective of like a market research. And then you'd let this metaverse be given to your people for your focus group. And they'll tell you, no, 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 we all want the machines on the right hand side versus the left. And that's what you're so like the typical focus group market research survey you have that capability of it 
you have the ability to have something like uh, a sports stadium landmark where you own a piece of that land. And then depending on the legalities of it, you could build your own content around it or drop in, depending on which platform, augmented reality. So famous fans and famous things, if you have the rights to those videos and images, you could put them in there so that people could walk around the empty stadium on a tour and you could begin to do augmented reality tours. Uh, even a local business in this, or one of these earth-based platforms now, like I'm thinking about the most boring business type of client that I have. And I really like the guy, he's not boring, but a, a guy who does tax returns, right? And he's a single office. Right now, not only could I put an office at his space and his actual location on earth that you could fly your little drone into, drop down to the ground, walk into his building, see, but now you can see an AI avatar of him that you could then populate with, let's say, the top 100 most commonly asked questions from the IRS website, plus his own stuff, his own blog posts or transcripts, and that becomes the large language model or the micro language model of an avatar that you can interact with and ask basic questions like, how do I increase my tax deductions? Can I, is it, when does it make sense to start, you know, set up an LLC or a corporation, whatever typical type of tax related questions or whatever they are outside of the United States, but that type of avatar could return. And then ultimately with a clickable link and you could schedule an appointment soon, you'll be even able to gamify an otherwise boring business like a, like a public accountant tax return guy, where if you answer 10 questions and collect enough coins, you could then redeem them for a promo code. Instead of him charging you for a consultation, you get a free consultation, stuff like that. Um, and then here's the real kicker that I promised you. Uh, I told everyone before, in some of these metaverses where you own the NFT and they carve up something, a map like Google Maps, but or there's here in the US, we have Apple Maps, we have Waze, we have MapQuest, all these different map online mapping platforms. But these break them up into different types of pixels, either rectangles or squares or hexagons or whatever it is. And then you can buy them as an NFT and put them in your MetaMask wallet. And then you can token gate and do other things off of them, presumably. Here's the interesting thing on, a, I think, of the 12 or so roughly at the time of this space, the 12 or so metaverse platforms that are earth-based, you can own a piece of land or drop a pin and control a piece of land in a, anywhere in the world in six or seven of them at least, maybe even more. And the reason why I bring that up is because um, I'm in the Texas area, like when airdrop is, I'm, and, and so I bought a piece of the John F. Kennedy, the grassy knoll, the JFK in the Dallas area. However, in the last week, again, today is the Wednesday, the 17th. So for those listening on months later, uh, just a few days ago, the world all of a sudden became very familiar with a piece of land in Butler, Pennsylvania. I think we all know what that is. And one of them allows the ability to fly your drone and drop down to the ground. So as we're doing this and when I'll have to record a video and send it to you, I'm actually walking around the various vantage points that people are talking about right now as we speak on Twitter or Instagram or other social media, but I actually own in two of the 12, the various spots of interest of what happened this past Saturday evening. Now, I don't plan on doing anything with them because other than maybe honoring the deceased firefighter who, you know, obviously was, was killed uh, and maybe whatever the official GoFundMe, I'll drop a link to that to do something to, you know, to honor the memory once some more information comes out. I think that might be an appropriate thing to do and appropriate, not, not incorrect, something to honor. But at least this is fascinating. And you can actually take a look from different vantage points right now either with your little uh your your uh, interoperable avatar or you can fly your drone and go from point a to point b looking at it and then i could record that make a youtube video of it and then people could come in and explore areas that are of obviously of high controversy because of so much speculation as to what really happened anywhere in the world it could be here it could be jfk it could be roswell new mexico with the 1947 alien crash I don't care. Wherever there's a piece of physical land that has emotion and controversy, you now can create your own content, almost like your own uh, visitor center or little tour guide on that plot of land if you own it in some of these metaverse platforms or in another one, drop in pieces of content that are um, augmented reality 
or you can do other things and hold the land when they have other things where you can build a more robust metaverse because again the technology is going to improve you could own that as well if you want to play in that pool but talk about a way to bring people in all of a sudden where i tell them i own the land right now where the uh where the trump rally was in butler pennsylvania just a few days ago now the question of it is if, of it's being appropriate or not is a different story and i totally understand that concept i'm just saying from an ability to bring in somebody who has no idea about web3 and make them curious to find out something, at least dip their toe in the water, this might be a way to do it. Same thing with sports fans. You can bring them into your favorite sports team arena or uh, famous uh, locations for movies where movies were, were filmed or whatever, bring them in that way. So wherever there's high emotion of land, you can bring people into these earth-based lands, or if it's a business owner, you could have business utility. Thank you for letting me go this long, but I just wanted to make sure that I convey the different types of use cases that can be done just within this subset of metaverses known as the Earth-based, let alone everything that Intu had mentioned earlier, which is just fascinating. Thank you. The, thank, thank you. And, and you actually you actually expanded on two different opportunities, um, and, and one of them were, were is, is kind of what we're going to end on, which is perfect. Uh, but the first part of what you were saying and, 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 and what I was saying earlier, that's an experience, being able to go back to something that's happened historically, being able to walk through it and see it from different points. If you're one of those kind of people, and, and a lot of us are, that, that follow news, that like to learn, that may be watching something like this on the news, uh, seeing different updates, wishing that you could be there, be in the mix, Obviously, you know, you may have significant others in your ear telling you it's a really bad idea to get in your car and drive over there. The next best thing would be to get into it virtually and, and experience it that way. Um, also, and, and, and as you were talking, I was, you know, kind of zoning off into other experiences that this could definitely highlight. Like you said, like with real world geographic stuff, being able to go somewhere like, uh, so this is two completely different scenarios, going to Graceland, and a lot of people are familiar with Graceland, but imagine being able to go to Graceland and, and put on one of those Oculuses and be able to, to see you know, Elvis perform for you or, or act out things in person. Um, my, my wife and my daughter and I, we went to a crypto event and, and went to the, the Tupac. Um, they used to have a, they had a pop-up for, for Tupac. And it was a great experience, but that would have probably been made way better being able to immerse, uh, uh, you know, myself in the experience and have all that kind of metaverse stuff around. So th those things, I I'm also imagining stuff like ghost tours and all that kind of stuff where you're able to actually, you know, see the physical apparitions or things like that. Like I said, from, from an experience perspective, there's so many different ways of adding the virtual component, um, you know, can, can, can highlight that experience or make it more interactive. And then on the other side, if you just couldn't even go to Graceland to begin with, well, now it makes it accessible that way too if it's if it's recreated in that aspect. And the second part, and, and this is the kind of part that we'll, that we'll start uh, winding down the space on. Uh, as you guys know, I do like to keep these spaces, you know, generally between an hour and an hour and a half. I thank you all for being here with me. Uh, for those of you who uh, listen back to the space, um, you know, we're talking about gaming, metaverse, digital identity, and Web3. I'm very blessed to have both nothing to do with ECW, who have both contributed some amazing uh, uh, points and insights uh, to this conversation. Um, and, and touching on the last part, if you are, you know, an investor in the metaverse, as ECW highlighted, uh, depending on what kind of assets or what kind of property that you own in the, in the metaverse, you may actually have an ability to generate revenue. Um, and 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 create these experiences that you're able to to, to monetize, um, you know, and, and and allow other people to experience. You may be able to be the proprietor on the other side, and there there's an opportunity here, as with all these conversations, because we're in Web three, because this is a new and growing space. There's an opportunity to become involved. Obviously, you know, the platform is about digital identity, and there's multiple different types of digital identity in the metaverse. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we have the space itself, um, which, you know, you, you build out, you create it as an asset. It becomes part of your identity. The avatars, um, you know, uh, especially as the space has become more interoperable. I, I remember when I was like, so like I said, I have the, the spatial space. I think when I first built that out, as with all things, I really deep dived and became like super familiar with it. And then as soon as I built it out, forgot about it. 
But at the time, I remember there was platforms that were making these avatars um, uh, that were customizable, that were interchangeable, um, you know, things that you would be able to, to, to speculate on and potentially, you know, be able to sell to other people. I know with the other side, you know, being able to, to use the different avatars they have in there, like with the CODAs and all that kind of different matter. Like I said, it's been a while since I've been in that side of the space. But again, there's an opportunity to invest in those types of assets, uh, digital identity straight up. You know, we're talking about gamer tags, domain names. You got to exist to something in any world, whether it's a real world or whether it's a virtual world, you got to have a name, right? Um, and being able to own uh, an immutable uh, a, a name that you can, like I said, own, profit from, that's attached to something um, that's permanent and on the blockchain, uh, that's going to have a place and already does have a place in the metaverse. So being first, being early. And, and investing in those, whether it's on the SLD side on your .eth or whether it's uh, investing on the TLD side and building your own gaming community or uh, your own guilds or, or being able to create your own projects. I mean, even Metropolis World has its own TLD with .metropolis, and we'll, we'll see how they integrate that into their ecosystem. So there, there's the opportunity definitely there for that digital identity. And then obviously, you know, the, the, uh, the different assets that you can purchase in these multiple worlds. Uh, that once people can find you, you know, the, the metaverse and the blockchain make it extremely easy, um, you know, to, to trade and, th and things like that. So multiple ways for you to participate in the metaverse ecosystem, you know, again, whether it's on the usability side, something that can actually improve the way that you that you live or interact with people um, or, uh, you know, on the, on the financial side, the entrepreneurial side, on the asset owning side. Um, you know, if you're wanting to create a space that other people can enjoy and, and potentially create a revenue for yourself. Um, and then also, uh, you know, as we mentioned, to, to just build a legacy and build a gallery of the things that you've achieved and accomplished on the blockchain. Um, and all of that is part of, you know, our, our, our digital identity, our portfolio that others are able to see. Um, before we wrap up, um, and, and like I said, amazing conversation for both of you guys. I really thank you for coming up to the space. Uh, I want to give uh, both of you a chance to, to say any words or leave us with anything before we, we get wrapped up, if you have any uh, closing or final thoughts. Yeah, no, Eric, I just want to thank you for um, giving this opportunity to speak. Um, yeah, learned a lot even just from learning from ECW and um, learned a lot about domain names from you. <laughs> and um, yeah, just excited to see where this goes and uh, looking forward to updating people in the future of once we're in the future of this space. So yeah, I just want to last words, you know, we are in an attention economy. I think whichever metaverse drives the attention, um, I think there's going to be room to monetize that attention, whether it be through ad space um, and whether it be to be demonstrate and show um, a service or even an item that a picture doesn't do its justice. Um, this is going to be able to open up new channels um, for how things are displayed. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. But thank you as well. And again, it was a pleasure to have you here. Uh, go for it, ECW. Uh, first of all, both of you, thank you for all of your insights today. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to be jotting down notes from the archive here, here later today or, or, or definitely by this weekend. So, and, and as always, just a couple things. Uh, number one, uh, for the person who introduced us, uh, shout out to Paige Howe, who's in the domain space of consultant with free name. That's where I first originally met him. He introduced uh, when Airdrop and I at uh, NamesCon in Austin, Texas, just a few weeks ago. And I just want to say thank you for number one, for stretching my brain. When I left that day, I felt like silly putty. So it was awesome. I, I love being the dumbest guy in the room. So I, I walked out so much better and, and the follow-up was even better. So if you're listening or you, this is getting referred, make sure you follow him and or anything of his iHeart domains uh, topics. That's number one. Um, number two, takeaways from the principles. Uh, I'm just looking at something here. I saw it uh, popped up on Twitter feed in the AI section of crypto and the tokens, something like Filecoin, Near, Render, those type of uh, tokens that have had, relatively speaking, pretty phenomenal runs since the fall of last year, October, November of 2023. Um, 
there's money being in there. They're now doing uh, all sorts of like uh, hedge funds or, you know, monetary funds. So you're starting to see the investment capital that's been sitting on the sideline coming into these various sectors. So always follow along there and know that even if you don't have to necessarily be in those coins or, or what they're offering, at least it's a sign that there's money coming in. So obviously, you know, following the money trail, almost like in financial analysis, you're seeing money going into the semiconductor sector for some reason. And therefore you want to take a look at maybe some things and in investing in there or rolling money out of another sector. So, you know, however you want to play it, but use it as a sign. And then the other thing is when it comes to these metaverses, um, the lot of the, the one drawback I've seen when people talk about in the various Discord channels, um, because they have them obviously for each platform, is that you see a lot of exclusivity or tribalism. So of the of the dozen or so that are out there, there are people who are just diehard junkies on the one platform and they don't even know or they know of it automatically exclude the others. But very much if you go back to the stuff I'm doing for the clients in the real world set, you know, for now for the um, search engine rankings, I need them to be on multiple maps. So while Google Maps and Google Reviews tends to be the one they lean toward, they still love their maps on Yelp. And even Apple Maps can drive sales. Maps on Bing dot com or msn depending on, can drive sales so they need to be on multiple platforms and each can do slightly different things in these earth-based metaverses platform excuse me my grammar was off the earth-based metaverse sub niche of the metaverse universe if you decide to play in that pool reach out you know c contact me uh, we'll, we'll talk about a bunch of things and, and um you know and, and bounce some ideas off use case and uh utility but also the ability to have the same location of interest purchased in say two or three or four more depending on your budget of course uh might not be a bad option because the different platforms allow for different use cases and simultaneously they also have the ability if one of them happens to fall apart because of finances or something breaks with the tech or they really load the boat trying to push their one cryptocurrency and then that crashes or it turns into a pump and dump and we don't know. You've diversified even though you're going after the same physical location. So there are some merits to going after more than one, again, if time and budget permit. So open invitation to reach out, but the biggest takeaway, thank you to everyone and make sure you follow everything that uh, when Airdrop and, and under the iHeart brand is doing. You've got some phenomenal content out there. Thank you. And thank, thank you as well. Also, thank you for that sound advice. It, it seems like not much changes from industry to industry. So just like in the domain space, if you can corner your name everywhere, it, you probably should. And some more sound advice in the metaverse space, if you can corner um, and, and uh, get your assets wherever they are. I mean, that, especially if you're going to commercialize them. That obviously puts you in the best position. And and thank you both for the kind words. If you guys aren't already, you know, following both Nothing to Do uh, and ECW, please both do so. Both building in this space. Um, you know, you guys know me. I connect with builders and doers in the space, people that add value. Both of them are obviously adding tremendous value both to me personally and to the space and have just added value to all of you guys uh, with the words that they have dropped on the space. Uh, in closing, um, you guys can think of the metaverse as one big online playground. In this space, uh, who you are and what's yours can be shown digitally through your on-chain digital identity. As people do more things in this digital playground, um, having a digital you becomes as cool and as important as it is in real life. Uh, the digital version of you could end up being worth a lot in the future, so there's no time like the present to start building. Um, if you guys could always, as always, uh, please follow us on X, Wartcast, YouTube, support our tech talks by sharing our spaces. Uh, we will upload this to the website in a couple days. You'll be able to find this on our archive at iHeartDomains.com and via techtalk.host on any major podcast player out there. Most importantly, I hope you guys all focus on your mission and not your condition. Happy domaining. See you all next week. Next week, we have an AMA with Push Protocol. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys have been wanting to learn about the value and the utility that they are adding uh, to ENS domains and all kinds of domains all over the space, very excited to help bring them, uh, uh, bring that AMA uh, on the platform. So thank you guys for, for being here. Thank you, Nothing to Do. Thank you, ECW. You guys are amazing. Enjoy the rest of the week. 
couple hours, we've got the verb space. If any of you guys are verbish or nounish, so feel free to tap in there. Completely different vibe. But yeah, thank you guys. You've been here for another Tech Talk.